So, this is a very long Eugene Acuna video, so we're going to break it up into three parts. So we're going to watch like 20 minutes of this, because me watching 20 minutes of this is probably like, I don't know, 40 minutes, 50 minutes of shit, probably. I don't know. But it's it's going to be more than 20 minutes worth of shit. So we're going to break it into thirds. And we're just going to start here, and then we'll uh, jump into some Star Wars Survivor again. Let's see what this is about. The Ratoon, Ratoon, oh my god, I can't talk today, and we already just, this is a three-year-old video. The Return of Eugenia Cooney. It does not look good at all. That looks terrifying as well as unhealthy. And when I see this, it reminds me of the kid on TikTok that became a meme who's like sitting like this with arms that are as, as big as Eugenia is saying, imagine you get in a fight with me. What are you going to do? It's like, I'm just going to let you hit me and break every bone in your arm at once. Like, what do you mean? You look frail and incapable of survival. It's not good. That actually looks way better and I couldn't. I don't think she could possibly be more wrong about that assessment of how she looks in this picture. That's it's shitty she feels that way about it or felt that way about it, but the fact is, just stop acting like it's normal. Like, the fact is, she's she's dealing with an issue that makes her feel like this is the way that you should look or that she should look and that she's not attractive otherwise. And there are several things that can lead into that. Like, for instance, and I don't know her past, right? I don't know her past. I don't know her mom's past. I'm not making accusations. I'm just pointing out factors that lead to people in general having eating disorders. So you'd have, say, she could have been entered into modeling when she was young, like very young, like a child model, right? And then you're around models, and models are supposed to look like a hanger. They're not supposed to have a shape. They're not supposed to have that hourglass shape to them. They're not supposed to have a large chest. They're not supposed to have hips. They're not supposed to have a butt. They're supposed to look like a hanger to walk the clothes out and take them back. If the woman's too attractive as a model, she takes away from the clothing. Like, it's not how a model is supposed to look at all. So keep that in mind if her mom for instance was a model or a model even from a young age same thing right and some moms end up also doing things like belittling their children for looking too fat or belittling their children because look at how i used to look and hold up a picture of when they were a skin not mom or a skin jesus a skinnier version of themselves, not yet a mother, and then they say, you did this to my body, and they shame their child into their parent being fat. It's, it's not healthy. And then you also have to imagine what happens if, say, she's around those kinds of influences, and then she's at school, and she's a normal-sized girl, for her age, but since girls are typically taller and bigger than boys early on, what if those boys are also teasing her, right? And saying, oh, well, you're just big. You're fat. Because they're kids and kids are mean, right? And maybe they were just saying, oh, well, you're big because she's taller than them. And she took it as being fat because that's the influence that she has on her. These are the types of things that can lead to this. Which is why it's important to not treat your kids that way. It's important to not blame your kids for your body. If you are overweight, it is your doing. You're the one who's choosing your diet. You're the one who's choosing your amount of exercise. You're the one who's making these decisions about your life, not your children. You cannot blame them for it. And 
it sucks that she feels bad about being an influence on children and people treating her like shit for it. The thing is, this somebody who is anorexic having a platform and not talking about like, oh, well, my body's not really healthy and it's not attainable really and you shouldn't try to have this body if she's not outwardly saying that on a regular basis then and regular i mean like pretty much every video she needs to constantly be saying it then you're gonna be attacked for it because same thing that i've said with things involving the trans community and the trans activists right now you're fucking with kids and when kids are being messed with or there's any kind of an influence on kids that may be negative it may be negatively impactful it could lead to them having an unhealthy life or maybe wishing for uh you know, self-deletion or something along those lines people get mad about it and people will take it out on you they will take it out on your community they will take it out on anything that you believe in anything you stand for and they will try to tear you down for it because they are kids and instinctively we want to protect kids so it's i feel sorry for her for feeling this way but she seems to be completely unaware of the impact and the repercussions of what she's dealing with regardless of where this may have come from if she's developed her entire personality to be online she's probably looking at likes and dislikes and it's creating her own self image as well and impacting her emotionally. And this happens with a lot of people and it's too bad. Like just, like I said, if you don't have thick skin and people's opinions on the internet, or they're, they're clicking a like button or a share button or they're not, if that's going to bother you, then don't be involved on the internet. Use it to watch things, use it to view things, use it to research stuff, listen to music, whatever. But don't put yourself out there on it if it's going to harm you that way. It's really not worth it. It's just the internet. And there's a whole world of life for you to live. Here's the thing is, her if she were to actually go through like a, a rehab or whatever you do for anorexia or bulimia, whatever it is she's doing and document it she could do really well and the fact is like i was saying before if she built her whole personality on being reliant on the internet and she's it's her only form of income because it's what she's done forever and she found success in it early on and quick part of her being this way now is probably a fear of losing that income that stability and she probably doesn't realize she could go through recovery. She could document all of it. She could put it all on the internet for people to watch and to view. And it wouldn't hurt her at all. It would, it would, I guarantee what would happen is it would help her grow. And she'd be able to rebrand herself from being this insanely thin girl to a healthily skinny girl and people wouldn't hate it you're always going to have people who hate you just because you're on the internet but those people don't matter the internet's not a real place that's my bad i want you to all take a look at these pictures so these photos you're looking at are from popular YouTube star Eugenia. Her physical appearance has sparked a wildfire of controversy. Next up is someone that people want Shane to focus on immediately. I'm talking about Eugenia Cooney. Hey guys, it's Eugenia. Can Shane Dawson please do a series on Eugenia Cooney? There are so many questions from everyone that needs to be answered. I feel for her, I, but she does not look good. I mean, from a professional standpoint, I mean, she really looks emaciated. Um, you're my favorite skeleton girl. Well, thank you. Thank you, SSL. I'll be a skeleton girl. Skeletons are cool, so thank you. <laughs> what makes me happy? Well, coming on here, talking to you guys makes me happy. What happened with me? I don't know what happened with me. What do you mean, what happened with me? Due to three meals a day challenge? Is that a challenge, guys? I'm really only subscribed. 
dry because I'm waiting for her to kill herself or die of starvation. Therefore, I, I guess. Oh, and what is that? Oh, somebody's username. Whatever, though. You guys just want to have like weird, bad usernames. But, anyways, yeah. So, obviously, I don't look too good there. I'm aware. I know. <laughs> oh, I look so bad here. I really. Do I still care disagree about with you. that. Yeah, I'm. herself has never admitted to anorexia or bulimia she has 452,000 followers on instagram and i guess some of her followers have admitted that they're jealous of her thin look your stomach is so flat oh kelly like i've never tried to come on here and like tell you guys like okay this is my size and this should be your size too well i'm sure you're i'm sure you are gorgeous i'm sure everything about you is like super gorgeous so yeah not one but four petitions have gone out there to shut down her social media accounts due to what those folks believe is her dangerous influence that she could be having on those potentially battling eating disorders. I, I feel bad about everything I thought I was gonna be like, I didn't mean to like make everyone upset. Like, I don't know, like everyone like, is mad at me now. I'm sorry, I really don't mean to make you guys upset ever. Okay, like I just hope you understand that. I never mean to like make people upset, like ever. Whenever I do, I feel really bad. I, I know it doesn't seem like it, but I do. All right, Shane, this may be the one that I'm rooting for the most. I'm invested. Okay, so uh, my biggest obstacle in my career is actually going to be rejection. Ouch. Let me start from the beginning because there's going to be some of you guys that don't know. This is my first time on here. Like, I don't really know what else to do, so. And then I have, like, th this pillow over here. Just, just in case you guys can. So she started on YouTube six years ago, seven years ago. Hi, guys. As you can hopefully tell, I just got a new camera. Ever since then, she has been visibly thin. And as the years went on... See, look at her knees there. ...much thinner. And she never really... Look at her knees there. Um, denied having an eating disorder. Um, you look really skinny. Is there a story behind it? Um, there isn't really a story. This is just kind of how my body is. I'm fully fine, so don't worry. I, I'm, I'm not, like, anorexic or whatever. I'm just kind of naturally skinny. Seriously, like, my doctor, like, thinks I'm fine. There's nothing wrong. Am I okay? Yes, I'm definitely okay. Everything's fine. <laughs> You're killing yourself? I'm really not killing myself, Carl. But she was confronted with it. I mean, every single comment on her channel, so many videos about her weight, about how she's making other young girls want to be anorexic because of her, and obviously there was a lot of people who were using the situation for views and for clicks. And if you guys enjoyed this video and, and, and want Eugenia to get healthy, pop a like on this video. But then there was also... Yeah, that dude's not genuine about that either. You can tell. ...medical help. The people who are actually nice to her... This is... Genuine. About her, they care about her. You are young enough to turn this all around. Eugenia, I really hope you're okay. I don't want to see somebody so good and kind and caring just disappear. So back in January, uh, she posted a video, and people were really scared for her. And then she Look at how terrifyingly thin that looks compared to everything prior to that. She's never, never, ever said that she needed help. Like, it was it, one of those things where she, like... Can you document your road to recovery? It would help a lot of people. You know, like, I'm not, like, in, like, recovery or anything like that. Like, I really, like, I don't really feel like I have to, like, prove that, like, help right now or anything. You know, so for her to say that to me, I was like, oh, my God. I'm just, I'm just gonna cry. And I was just, oh, my God, this is it. 
24 year old who's yeah see like i'm i'm happy she changed her mind at least even though she's clearly like relapsed and gone back i'm happy she's changed her mind on that she admitted at least to people who knew her personally that she was gonna get help and she went to get it regardless of whether or not she shares it with anybody i'm glad she went and did it because that like doing it and admitting you have a problem is an important step to take in any of these things so Mia Cooney announces she will be taking a break from YouTube and social media to focus on her health. So now that she's out of rehab and wants to tell her story and she trusts me and knows that I love her so we're going to do this right, my hope and her hope is that this could help a lot of people. So that's why we're doing this and I want to make sure I can somehow help. This to me feels like the most important thing I've ever done. Like it feels very much like, oh, this is like I, I don't want to fuck this up. I want to, I want to do this right. So that's why. I hope he's not putting too much pressure on himself when he made this. To a point where, if she were to relapse, which it seems like she has, that he's he doesn't feel responsible for that. Like he fell short. Because there's nothing more he can do other than support and be there and be honest with her about it. Like, you can't lie to her about it, but you can also not be a dick about it. And that's, hopefully he understands not to be too uh, self-involved, assuming he's going to be able to change this on his own. Because there's no way in hell you can. Of course. Pick up a burger and cut the food. That's not how this works. Being negligent. See, that's not how it works. That is the simple way of saying to do it. It's just like the simple way of telling somebody who's obese to lose weight is telling them to put down the burger, right? Like that's the simplistic way of saying it. It is she does need to eat more food. There's more things tied to it that she needs to deal with. Like I was saying, it, there's it's a mental thing. Same thing with people who are overweight. It's a mental thing. Same thing with people who want to get in shape. They want to build muscle. They want to be healthy. You want a six-pack. Are you doing the things to do that? Or are you just complaining that you don't have it and making excuses? Because ultimately, you have to eat to get away from being too thin you have to eat less to get away from being overweight there's it is what it is and by not addressing it if young people are going to watch her videos and potentially want to be her job it comes back to the question we've talked about in several different avenues when is a creator when is a person responsible for what their audience does let's know what you think and why hi there it's katie again the more we keep things secret the more power they have over us because the one thing we don't want to do is not talk about it. <laughs> Which is why it was good to see that she brought it up to people she knew personally. I'll get you a summer room. <laughs> so that you can be better equipped to be supportive and not intrusive. We want to open the door for more conversation. You don't want to force it. And you don't want your daughter to feel like you're just hounding her. Because what that does is it makes us retreat more. It makes us worry and then we think that all you're noticing, all you care about is the food. And it's not about the food. Exactly. Like, and that's that's the opposite end, right? Is if you're trying to force things on people too much, they will push back as well. Like, you can't do that either. You can't force it. That's part of why it's important to admit you have an issue and you need to address it. You all, When you do that, you have to also admit what you have to do to correct it. In this case, eating more food. It's actually about managing our emotions in a more healthy and constructive way. Because we need everybody involved to give us a great, great support system to get a healthy mind and a healthy body. No one can see you. 
Wait, where's person? I told you. What are you doing? No, don't do that. What are you doing? You're not on camera. All right, guys. Well, I'm really sorry. I'm going to go, so. I know her lawyer is coming for a second, but that's just because we have a release form that, like, we have to make sure everyone in line gets. And I also don't want people to think that I'm comic. Like, I know that she has an eating disorder because I put her medication. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you that people have eating disorders want to look different. People often assume that eating disorders only look one way. Mm -hmm. That an eating disorder is just when people are too skinny and you need to eat a sandwich and get over it. Like, that's what you hear. Like, Yeah, and, like, once again, that's because it's the simplistic way of viewing it. You just eat a sandwich. The thing is, is... It's a mental disorder, and you can also have an eating disorder that's the opposite. People like the my six hundred pound life. Do you really think that those people don't have an eating disorder as well? The difference is instead of not eating to deal with the stresses or whatever's going on in their life, they're overeating, right? So it is what it is, and in both situations, they're both probably very inactive. Because you need to eat to have the energy to be active. And if you're eating and being active, you develop muscle. So there's, they're both probably both inactive for both extremes. And it's just a matter of whether you're eating your mental illness or you're starving your mental illness. You have to deal with it mentally as well. Like, uh, I eat my emotions, right? We've all heard that. Do you love boating? Oh, damn it. Well, Freedom Boat Club makes boating easier than ever. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I have a lot of, okay, so I have a lot of questions about how to do this right and also, like, not trigger people watching, but also her. Like, could, okay, for example, if I walk in and, like, I haven't seen her, if she... Yeah, she doesn't need reaffirm like affirmations of how she looks. How she looks is part of the problem with her own mind. For a lot of these people, like I was saying before, the parent who's talking about what you did to their body or shaming you for your body, the the industry of modeling that will shame you for your body the kids that will say comments that you take as shaming you for your body. You don't need to say anything about these people's bodies that are trying to fix it at all. It's just like if you have an alcoholic at your house, you probably remove the alcohol from view, but you don't bring up drinking, right? You don't bring that up. If you know somebody who's doing like a narcotics anonymous, you're not bringing up drugs when they're around, right? Like, it's fairly simple. You just talk to them like a normal person who's your friend and you let them deal with their life. You don't bring up the issue. You let them deal with their life. If they bring up their issue, you discuss it, but you don't have to bring it up at all. You bringing it up makes them think that there's something wrong with it in some way. Even if you're not doing it in a negative way. That's the way that it'll go through their mind because that's the that's the mental side of the disorder. See. So I was scrolling through Twitter and I saw this picture of Eugenia Cooney a few weeks ago. And yo, that girl <sighs> seems like she's actually recovering. People were excited and they were posting, you know, kind of like, oh, she's getting healthy. And I even sent her a text and I was like, hey, you, like, oh my God, like I cried looking at the picture. Like you look so healthy, you look so good. I'm so proud of you. And she was just like, oh, thank you. Like I didn't know he was going to post that. Like whatever. And now I'm like, oh, fuck. Should yep. I like that? I mean, it was with the best intentions and people say stuff like that all the time. See, that's the thing is your intention matters, but the way there somebody with a disorder digests it is what's going to impact the outcome. So don't like, once again, don't beat yourself up like him freaking out about it. Like, don't beat yourself up. You can't change the past. 
but now you know for the future, right? So arm yourself with information. You didn't have that information before, now you do. You know it came from a place of good intention, so there's really no reason to beat yourself up about it. I just know from my push to do with the life that, like, your even service takes that information and channels it into an insult. But that's not your fault. We don't know. We just want to stay away from, like I said, any comment on how they look. Which I know just is hard, especially if you're like, oh my god, you look so good. And we mean it in a very earnest, like, I'm so happy for you. I was really worried way, but it could just be cons misconstrued and taken as, like, Like, but how long were those videos? How long was she doing that for? Like, when she was streaming video games or whatever, she's sitting in a chair, right? Like, I'm not doing a whole lot right now, for instance. At the same time, when she's out doing stuff in public, how long is that lasting? Is she going to the grocery store and carrying groceries around? Or is she pushing the cart, and then when she gets back to the car into the house and unloads groceries and puts them in the fridge. She just want a nap. Does she want to sit down for the next three hours? Does she, you don't know. You're not seeing that side of it. Like you see her go out and go shopping for clothes or whatever. And then she comes home like, and she's not on camera. Well, how, how's that look? You don't know. You only see what people show you and what people tend to show you on the internet is their flawless self. I personally dislike that. It irritates shit out of me. It's fake as fuck. And it's why I don't do that. But it is what it is. Like a lot of my patrons who are underweight and not doing well <clears throat> can do a lot in a short period of time. It's pretty much running on adrenaline. And a lot of times when we have an eating disorder that causes us to be underweight, our body runs on that. I just I just assumed that was what was going on. And an adrenaline dump will make you exhausted. See, look at how much more active her mom looked there. I guess if you call that deep, like relative to her, yeah. And like I said, um, the online personality thing, right? If that becomes your personality and it matters so much, you're going to do that. Like, uh, like Kennison, for instance, if we look at comedy, right? Kennison became that guy. Like, he was a pastor before he was a comedian he was a pastor so that's why he had that high energy presence and the way that he would do his comedy but then anytime people saw him it was hey here's the line it's snowing let's party and because that was his comedy and that character that he was in comedy became who he was all the time and it's what killed him. That is what killed Kennison in the end. So it's... That's not great to see. Because when you're, when you're going through... Like the things that he's pointing out right there. That's alarming because it could very well be the same thing. Her real self all the walls down. Just being herself. I feel like a lot of people... It helps 
come out, which is wonderful. Or if I'm in character, mm -hmm. I'm also kind of like not necessarily even like which maybe is a coping thing. I mean, and also we can say that like most of us have like a an on. Seem like is that a coping thing or is that her character for the channel, but no, who she's becoming? She's a little more amped, and I'm sure she's just trying to get more amped for it. So I don't know. It depends on how she's how she's doing, how comfortable she feels. She might feel really uncomfortable and put on, you know, her persona, which is fair. I mean, and the I first should, time she's talking about it. And I shouldn't bring up. No, that's just her doing the best she can do. You know, but I I would assume. It's smart that he's talking to somebody who's familiar and knows how to deal with people that have eating disorders to figure out what he should and shouldn't do, what he should try to avoid. It, it, he's going about this in the smartest way possible. Well, if I can interject for a second, mm -hmm. she said that she wanted you to like help her with yes. this, right? So you're just doing your best, and you're just being there for her. So yeah, and I think if if, if anybody could do it, if you could, because you know, if you've been there yourself. Okay, let me set you down. See if I can. There we go. Hey, it's kind of weird. She probably feels safe with doing it with you, you know, versus on her own. That's probably what the the deal was. Is he had done that. And hear about it from someone in it. Right. <laughs> Yesterday when I was like really what made him just... what made him think that was gonna help the fact that he just pulled out a blueberry acai diet coke like nothing about that sounds good and then the OCD way he opened it was just strange I've never seen anybody do it that way at all I've seen a lot of weird OCD stuff but I've never seen somebody go through a whole soda can dance to open the soda can that was that was just entertaining to be honest. A flavored Diet Coke. Coke's the normal flavor. It's already got a flavor to it. It's not just distilled water. Ah, oh, shit. Ah, some people are just too much. I almost thought, like, maybe I shouldn't do this. I think it will be okay. I mean, you should be more nervous than anybody. You literally have been a part of, like... He... Do you know that? Oh, my I've God. Actually, don't watched. drag me into Wait, what? this. Wait, what? on a news channel and they talked about Eugenia and they made two videos and the thumbnail title was bad. They made two videos but that's only two videos, right? And also if he was on a news channel did he do the thumbnails? Did somebody else do the thumbnails? Did he do the titles? Did somebody else do the titles? Did he do the description? Somebody else do the description? It's it's all a different thing. Like and how much say does he have over that either? Like, people who are doing news type stuff, how much say do they have on the topic that they're doing? How much say do they have on the way that it's titled? How much say do they have on a thumbnail? How much do they have on a description? How much do they have to say on, like, if it's scripted? How, like, how much do they really have influence in, like, a, a weighted input on those decisions. I mean, I didn't make the thumbnail. I mean, is Eugenia Cooney too skinny? Shock. See, I didn't make the thumbnail. See, that's my point right there. Is a lot of people and like YouTube channels and stuff like that, Rumble channels and all these like internet media things. People assume 
that the the individual you see on the screen is doing everything. Nine times out of ten, it's not. It's not. It's, that's the person in front of this camera, and that's about it. Ox emoji? The fucking emoji. Did you put that emoji in there? No. All right, I'm going to go ahead and watch it. Good luck. Thank you. See, though, Ryland is a, an example of someone who's just skinny but looks healthy, right? Like, as a contrast. I woke up today, and I was like, you know what? Aside from the eating disorder stuff, I just want to know what her life is. Okay, her house. What is Okay, so what you do is you ignore all the eating disorder stuff, and you focus on her life. That's it. That's it. Maybe you just say, like, so how has your life changed? Like, what's new? What's different about your life now? And that's it. You don't don't highlight shit. Don't bring shit up. Don't try to draw attention to shit. Just how's your life? What's different? What's changed? What is that? That's Kate's bedroom, the iconic Kate bedroom. But that's all we've seen, I think, in her videos. Like we haven't seen the rest of her house. What is her environment? Like I can't even imagine her walking around a house. Like she literally looks and not because of her weight, but because of her vibe, like a the way that they took that immediately over was scarily accurate. But because of her vibe, like the Watch how crazily accurate this is. Uh, Tim Burton like, yeah. does she just like does she wake up like that? They took a they took a clip of somebody in a Tim Burton film that's almost in the same position that she was where when they clipped it over. Good Lord. Everything about that was scarily accurate. Slope down the stairs and it was just really like, good editing and choice. You know what I mean? like, oh, I can see that. That's the vibe. Yeah. What is her life? Yeah, I guess nobody really focuses on that. She does have like a no. very specific aesthetic. And she's also too nice. She's probably hiding something. <laughs> What is she really hiding? Mental disorder. Like, that's what she's hiding, is mental disorder. Congratulations. You're better, but what else? <laughs> we just drag her. <laughs> okay. It's going to get serious, I know that. But until it does, I'll have fun with it. So, we're going to Eugene to Cody's house. I don't know what to expect. This is crazy. He's super nervous. Is it that he's excited or is it that he's nervous? Well, I guess excited and nervous. Excited and nervous go hand in hand. It's a little of both. <laughs> that was creepy as fuck is what that was. If somebody needs help, then you should be telling them that they need help. If you care about them. But just because you're part of the audience, you should just shut the fuck up? That's a strange viewpoint, is it not? Because that would be the, the opposite view, would it not? Are we overstepping boundaries? I think... <clears throat> job is to make everyone feel like they are your best friend and when you do that to people they feel like they have leverage on your life and can also have an opinion on who you are and what you do yeah there's there is a definite limit to it because people have this strange parasocial relationship type thing that they develop with people that they don't know but they consume content of whether it's consuming somebody's music their movies their tv shows their books their their YouTube videos, their Instagram posts, their TikTok things, like whatever it is. People develop a weird parasocial thing and don't know how to delineate and disassociate the two. I just wanna find a way to get out of my mind. So I feel like everyone feels like they have a say in her life and they genuinely want her to get help. I don't know. I don't know. 
That being said, if you've got that parasocial connection, you will feel like you do care about somebody at the same time. Like, I'm not taking that away. It's just there is a way to go about telling someone they need help and being healthy about it and being overbearing. Started when I was 15, some friends went and ditched me, but it manifested itself with two of insecurity. That I just wasn't good enough, maybe that's how it always was. Jesus Christ. I'm not the one in recovery here, okay? Leave me alone. Let me do my pills. Good Lord. Yeah, I think you were getting nervous when you started worrying about grease on your face and, like, makeup to see your friend. Like, that was extra, okay? And, like, I know I said I was only going to do 20 minutes. We're, we're more than 20 minutes in right now, or 21, almost 22 minutes. We're just going to wait till he gets to her house because that sounds like a good stopping point. It would be. It would be. 